This is going to be a very professional tutorial of how to make very not actually that professional headshots that will hopefully look nice. So I graduated last week and now I have a wonderful animation degree and what better to do with such a degree than to throw it the f*** away because my hand still has its RSI meaning I literally cannot work as the thing I've been trained to work as meaning life is meaningless now I guess. And because not only I cannot work in animation in the foreseeable future, but also because I am a trader, I've decided to work in live action instead. And because I did an animation degree, not a film degree, I don't have anything to show for in live action. So I decided to take the next year as a break to kind of work on my projects and make some stuff that is live action so that I do have something to show for. And while I'm doing that, I want to get something that will also bring me money <laughs> on the side of that. So I decided to be my extra self and get into performance work instead. Meaning I need headshots. Meaning, hey, guess what I can use my animation degree for? Because it taught me how to use Photoshop and how to... Colors and art. Bachelor of Arts. And I figured, while I'm already making headshots, I might as well show you guys how to make some for yourself too, hopefully. So, have fun with this video. To make very professional, unprofessional headshots, you need an amazing setup like mine. So I'm gonna walk you through what you need for your amazing, very non-professional setup. You gotta find yourself the following. Some indirect light source, like a window, a lamp or other portable light source. If you have a living room lamp, that's like... You need something that's like white or silver to have a reflector. I was using a pillow. So you got your three um, point lighting now. You got your main light, you got your backlight, you got your fill light via reflector. You need a solid color background. I used my green screen. You're gonna need some kind of camera to take pictures with, some kind of image editing software, and finally, you're gonna need a subject. Me in this case, I'm gonna use me as a subject because I need headshots, so yay. Because I am also a uh, non-binary trans person and there's not very many non-binary trans roles out there, I decided to um, make a whole range of different headshots so I could apply for just about anything. We're gonna make some magic, y'all. We're gonna make some goddamn magic, and I'm telling you, it's gonna be glorious. <laughs> Once you're done taking your pictures, pick your favorite ones. I ended up selecting three for each set. Uh, you're gonna import those into your Photoshop or similar software. I'm gonna talk about Photoshop in this case because that's what I, I used, but the principles are still the same, even if you're using a different software. I would like to apologize that my Photoshop is in German, because that's just how it be. And I'm gonna try and translate to the correct terms as best as I can. The first step is you need to take out your colored background. You want to go to select and then color select. It's gonna bring up a little window. You want to pick the color you want to get rid of and then mess about with the slider until you're happy with the selection. And then once it's selected, you're going to press the delete button on your keyboard to delete the contents of your selection. You might have to fiddle with it a bunch. I ended up selecting several shades of green and getting rid of them individually to get the cleanest result because you basically want to get a clean outline with as little color as possible left on it but without losing detail in like the hair and stuff. After that, you want to clean up your outline even further and adjust the crop. So you're going to get rid of any other bits that might not have been covered by your color surface. You can use any of the selection tools for that. You can use the... the brushy, the brushy looking one <laughs> to <laughs> select big chunks and kind of get rid of them at once. For smaller bits you might want to erase some or select them with the lasso tool. Um, what Basically whatever's necessary to achieve a clean outline without losing your detail is gonna be fine. I also ended up um, actually adjusting some of the colors with adjustment layers so you basically go into your adjustment layers 
and you get a color and saturation one and then you select the color you're working with and only in that one you might desaturate it, you might adjust the color and that will basically take only the bits of the color you're trying to get rid of and it will adjust them so they are less of that color. Next up you need to select what color you want your background to be. It can be useful to know some color theory for that. I use complementary colors uh, to the ones in my pictures. To figure out what's the complementary to the colors in your picture you can get a invert layer which will basically turn your whole picture negative and then you can just click off that and then color select and you can basically figure out from that what color you might need. Now because the backgrounds that we're trying to achieve are gradient backgrounds, you are in very good hands because I have not done basically any other kind of background for the past six years of my career. So if anyone knows how to do a good gradient background, it me. <laughs> you need to add fake light and shadow. Uh, you want to match the direction of your light source, so in this case the, the backlight coming from the upper left corner. You want to get your gradient tool, you want to put it on the, the transparent bit, um, you want to put it on the circular bit, and then select a, a light color that preferably would match the color of the light you were using. So in this case it was a yellow light because it was a lamp. Daylight would be um, blue or you might have a colored light. You can use your blend modes up here um, to basically select one of the light ones and usually soft light um, works quite well for putting some light over a background. You can also adjust the like opacity of your layer, or anything like that. For the shadow, you want to go with a darker color. You can play around with the tint a bit if you want. It makes it look a bit more natural because it like has color variation that way. For the shadow, uh, you want to basically take your gradient tool again with the circular setting and invert it so that you get everything but the circle that you just made your light source. Finally, you can adjust the image as you please. Contrast is good, but it needs to be readable. If you have a lighting layer, you can use these little eyedropper tools down here to basically pick your darkest tones, your, I don't know, mid-tones, and your highlights so that it will do the adjustment for you. I also tend to saturate my pictures a bit to make it look more alive. Take, take it from me, a vampire, to, to look more alive, make it look like you have blood in your veins, it's great. When you've done all of those lovely things and you're happy with your colours and you're happy with everything and how it turned out and how clean your outline is and all of that, once you're done with that, if you, like me, use the shitty camera, <laughs> you're gonna wanna um, add some grain to your background, just a, just a little, just a little bit to match it to your image quality because otherwise if you have a super smooth background and a really like grainy foreground, it don't look right. And then once you got that, you're done, you got your headshots, just export them to JPEG or PNG and, and you're good, you got headshots now, congrats. I hope this was a very helpful video for all, all of the people who don't want to go to a photographer for this stuff and and I hope you have a lovely day. Goodbye. I was right. Bye. Ignore it. Ignore the skirt. Ignore the skirt. This is the male one. It's fine. Men can wear skirts. The first step was coloring my hair to be one color because it was a mess before that.